Illustrations by Pete. Hello everyone. Thank you again for clicking on another video. And today what I'm doing is a line of wash. I'm actually doing the inverse. I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to do the wash first. And then I'll do the line part. And the disadvantage to this is that um, every painting or drawing tends to have an ugly phase. And that's where things just don't look great. And when you do the wash first in a line and wash, if you're doing a watercolor, it's a little different, just a straight watercolor. But if you do a line and wash, sometimes that wash part looks a little bit awkward in the beginning. Um, I'm going to further complicate this by using water-soluble pencils. This is the Graphitent line from Derwent. Um, they are my favorite pencils to use. I really like that they have more of a muted tone to them. Um, I enjoy that about them. They're, the Derwent Ink Tense are another great water-soluble pencil to use, but they're very intense. These are a little bit more muted. But like I was saying, when you tend to use the wash first, uh, you don't put all the details in until you get to the line aspect of it so it tends to look a little ugly for a little while until you get to the end of it where all the details really pop with the line aspect of it now i tend to start my paintings with a little bit of a pencil sketch underneath and i, I don't record that because it sometimes it takes forever that's the longest part for me sometimes i'll just erase and redraw and erase and redraw till i get it just right but in in this instance i'm using a it's a water-soluble graphite uh, sketch line from Derwent as well. And I'll put a link to those in the bottom. They're fun because you can put them under watercolor. If you use the HB one, it doesn't put off such a strong gray where it's going to muddy up your colors. Um, and of course it won't with the graphitin more or less. But even if you're using watercolor, it won't really be strong enough to... Uh, get involved in your color and so and affect it in a negative way and uh, unless you're using like a bright yellow or something like that but for any other color it's soft enough it just dissolves right in and then you don't have to worry about erasing it later now if you start with your line first sometimes you start with a pencil drawing you have to erase all that pencil a after you fill in your line and you just get rid of that so it's just a clean ink line um, and of course once you watercolor over something if it was a solid pencil you would still see those lines but this way you don't they just blend right out so i want to talk about something that's been bugging me for a little while and just hear me out i think i'm a bad friend and i don't mean that like i want anything bad to happen to anyone or I ever wish anything bad to happen or um, i look out for myself before i look out for someone else or anything like that i mean i don't keep in contact with anyone but here's the thing the way that i think about things um, it, it's almost like the last interaction that i've ever had with you is kind of the same forever eternal state that you remain in my mind so if the last time i met you was in high school and it was at graduation and you said hey good luck in your life and you gave me a hug or a handshake or whatever that's still the same image that I have of you, regardless of anything else that I learn about you in, in the present. Um, you're still, in my mind, you're still my friend. And I recently got in touch with a, a friend that probably haven't seen in about eight years. And I said that to him. I said, you know what? I have to apologize. I don't think I'm a very good friend. I haven't spoken to you in a very long time. Uh, I think of the world of you. I think you're a great person. I just don't feel the need to constantly communicate with people in order to keep our relationship intact. I think that's all it is. Even friends that I've known forever, and I, I really do like these people. I, I, <laughs> they're they're been a great influence in my life, especially people I knew back in high school. Um, some of those people I needed at that point in my life, and they were there and accepted me and great friendships were formed and um, after high school of course everybody loses touch but you're going back I'm gonna say some of these people I maybe haven't spoken to since the late 90s and um, if I were to see you on the street and we had a good relationship back then I would act like you were my best friend I, I don't know anything about you I don't know where you are in your life now what you do who your kids names are if you have kids 
what your spouse's name is. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care what sports teams you follow. It really, none of those things really matter to me. And it's not because you don't matter to me. It's just that those things don't matter to me. The last time we were interacting with each other, we were friends and, and friendly and looking out for each other. And that's really how I think of you. Um, I don't hold grudges um, unless you have done something to hurt my wife or my family. I really don't. If someone did something to me, I don't hold grudges. I really don't have time for that. I, who knows what you were going through at that time that you said whatever you said to me or um, if you did something to me and maybe you were just having a bad day. Maybe you slammed your pinky toe into the corner of the wall right before I spoke to you and you just lashed out at me. That's fine. It's it's okay. It's It's okay. It's fine. All I want to say is if you don't hear from me but I knew you back then or, or I've known you at some point in my life and we were friends and um, and we had a good interaction with each other I still feel that exact same way it's like it's the day after the last time I saw you in my mind when I was younger I mean really younger maybe between the ages of six and nine uh, there was a friend of mine that reconnected with me maybe a, well, it's probably been a lot of time since has passed uh, maybe four or five years since I spoke to that person but when he contacted me it was like it was the next day we were just I don't know wrestling out of a tree or something I don't know what we were doing but whatever that day was that I last saw him that's the way that I felt about him the next time I, I saw him or next time I talked to him anyway but I just wanted to let you know that's where I am so um, if I don't uh, say anything to you, if I don't get in touch with you, I still think of the world of you. Um, I think you're a great person. And, you know, most of the people probably that are listening to this video right now are those people. Um, because I don't have a really big audience right now. It's mostly the people who have known me who are watching this. And look, sometimes people influence your life and they don't even know they did. Um, there are some people that are in my life or were in my life uh, when I was younger. I have an aunt and uncle who are not really my aunt and uncle. And they have some children who are not really my cousins. And I still call them aunt and uncle. And I still call their kids my cousins. And I probably haven't spoken to most of them in, oh my goodness, maybe over 20 years. Let's say 25 years I haven't spoken to them. But when I look at, when I see them, if I'm scrolling through Facebook and I see them or whatever the case is, th that's my family. And um, that's exactly how I treat them. And they have a, had a huge impact on my life when I was younger. Um, I didn't really spend a whole lot of time with them, but the amount of time that I did spend was huge. For example, uh, my uncle that I'm speaking about, uh, he was into music. He was into martial arts. He was an artist. I am into all those things now. I, I think that was just a part of it. I think it was, uh, there was other people in my life, of course, that were also into those things that helped to fuel that. But, you know, he was a part of that and he influenced my life greatly in those areas. And so, and people might not even realize it. They don't even know. But um, anyway, anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I hope you don't mind. I, I'm going to use this channel kind of like a audio vlog thing while I'm while I'm doing this stuff because I get a lot of stuff off my chest and uh, people who don't want to hear about it don't have to and people that do can. So it's a, it's a perfect combination, isn't it? So anyway, what I want to talk about now is I'm going to gripe a little bit because there are some things that sometimes you're flipping around YouTube and they, they bother you a little bit. But one of them is you ever, you click on a video and the person pretends like you're not watching them and they're just intent on what they're doing and then they look up and they say oh hi I didn't see you there yes you did you did see me there because you had to get up you had to go turn on the camera and you had to come back and sit down and then pretend that you were doing something while you knew the camera was running you did know that's a strange thing I don't even understand. It, it doesn't make me seem relaxed or, or make you seem relaxed. It, It's just weird. It's like when you're watching another video and someone will be holding a cup of coffee almost right in front of their face. And you know they're going to take a sip. 
And they're going to take a sip at the worst possible moment. Sometimes it's in, in the middle of a sentence. They just, they just, so today I wanted to talk to you about something that, and you just stop your sentence. They took a very, very slow, deliberate sip of something. Maybe it was coffee. Maybe they want you to think that they're just an average person, which they are. Um, but that's weird. If you're ever in front of a camera and you're talking to an audience, don't stop and take a slow sip and, uh, and it's, it's so deliberate sometimes. But anyway, if someone's just talking, uh, their mouth gets a little dry and they take a sip, that's fine. But let's just stop it. Stop that. It's not normal. Nobody thinks that you're just talking normally when you do something like that. Nobody does that normally. You're not sitting there talking to someone while you're sitting at their, their table or you, you see them in a, a diner or a bar or a, the store and, and they're just sitting there holding a cup of coffee in front of their face the whole time. And then in the middle of their sentence, they're just taking a very slow, deliberate sip and you're trying to talk to them. I don't know. Well, thank you for letting me gripe about that. That's... That's ridiculous. So we're getting close to the end here. And um, I'm using a Unipin um, pigment liner on this one. And the reason why that I use that one, that one tends to grip the paper a little bit more. And um, you don't want something that is going to just slide over the top of the, that pencil mark and the, the paint. And uh, you could feel it a little bit. And I was going to put some texture in there and I, when I do that I like to feel the paper a little bit more so that's the pen that I use for that um, it's just it's a weird it has more drag on the paper it's, it's hard to explain but you can see after you uh, put some of the ink lines in there how it, it brings it brings it alive especially in the eye once I put the black into the eye it just looked it, it looked like a drawing then it looked like it was starting to become finished and then you just add the details that you want to add. And I think I might have ended this like 10 times. I just keep adding little things. I didn't record every little thing that I added. But you'll notice that I sign my name and then I'll go back in and do a little bit more. I always do that. It, you just It's never finished to me. I have to force myself to stop. Because I'll just keep adding and adding and then eventually I'll ruin it. So um, it's just easier uh, to do the last little bit that I do and then just stop and put it down and be done but um, if you have any questions let me know uh, this is fun I enjoy doing this this is um, usually I use a um, a regular brush with just a very very little bit of water when I use the water soluble pencils uh, almost dry but just just damp and I, I still dab it on a paper towel just enough to move the pigment around with the brush to to liquefy it but in this case, the, the graphitin is it's pretty easy to use. It's pretty easy to control. And I was able to just go in there with a water brush. And, and I can control those pretty well anyway. I use them all the time. So, well, thanks for watching. And I guess I'll hopefully see you next time.